Now, before we dive in, if you find my videos useful, make sure to click that subscribe button and also make sure to click that bell icon on the side to get notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, make sure to follow me on all at Saki Tech Online also for the latest updates. All right, let's dive in. Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys 10 crucial settings to enable or disable based on your needs on your Samsung Galaxy S10 or the S10 Plus, and of course the S10e. So let's dive in and discover and get acquainted with your S10 much better. Now the very first thing I want you to do is go to the settings. And I'm assuming a lot of you guys are going to be installing some kind of screen protector on your devices. And as you know, most of the Samsung Galaxy S10s come with pre-installed screen protector. So when I pull my S10 out from my retail box, it already had a pre-installed screen protector on top of it. So if you have that, or if you're going to install a screen protector, make sure you go to display and then scroll down and enable the touch sensitivity. So basically it says it right here. Uh, this is going to increase the touch sensitivity of the screen for use with screen protectors. So your uh, fingers are better recognized as you interact with your phone. All right, the next setting you need to enable is a very crucial security setting that a lot of people simply forget about, simply don't even think about. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to go to the settings and then go into lock screen over here and then go into secure lock settings. You tap on it and then it's gonna ask you to put your regular pin number in. So let's do that right now. And then once you do that, on the top, there's two options you need to enable immediately. And that one is lock automatically and lock instantly with power key. Now lock automatically, if you tap on it, by default is at five for 15 seconds, all right? And that shouldn't be the case, it should be at immediately. So if it was at 15 seconds, just to give you an example, and if the screen turns off, the phone doesn't actually lock for 15 seconds. So you wanna make sure it locks immediately as soon as the screen timeouts and turns off. And the other thing is, when you press your power button, Again, the screen doesn't lock right away. It actually is active for a couple seconds. So take a look at this. So right now I have a pin number, I have fingerprints enabled, but when I turn off my phone, right now it's supposed to be locked. Let's say I walk away, somebody came right in, double tap my phone, goes right inside. The phone is not locked, they've got full access to my smartphone, and that's not good. So you wanna make sure that you enable this option here, lock instantly with power key. Now when I lock my phone, and if I double tap it, it's gonna go into the actual lock screen like it's supposed to, and then I can use my fingerprint to log right in. So make sure these two are properly enabled. This has to be immediately, and this has to be on. All right, let's move on. Now, if you're outside, and if you actually lose your phone, uh, it's gone, okay? You, you just lost $1,000. So what you want to make sure is you, you enable the Find My Mobile feature. So you do wanna to go to the biometrics and security, and then you wanna scroll down to find my mobile, tap on it, and make sure this is enabled. You do have to have a Samsung account that is linked to this option, and then you wanna enable remote controls and Google location services. So let's say I went out there and I lost this phone. I came back home and boom, I'm in shock, it's gone. So what I can do is I can go to this website, findmymobile.samsung.com, uh, log in with my Samsung account, and then remotely control and locate the exact location of the smartphone. Now it is very possible somebody stole the phone and they turn it off. So what you wanna do is you want to actually send the last location before the uh, phone gets turned off. So if somebody did grab your phone and they turn it off, right before they turn it off, the phone is gonna send the last known location to the Find My Mobile website over here. And you do have this option here as well. Uh, I don't recommend doing this, but you can do it. This is a remote unlock feature. If you enable this, your PIN uh, and your password will be stored on Samsung servers, but then you can use those to remotely unlock your smartphone and even control the phone uh, when it's out there and you do not know where it's at. I don't think it's a very necessary feature, but again, it is an option there. It's a reason, it's an option. You can enable it if you are comfortable, but I think this, this and this is going to fully protect you in case you lose your smartphone. Nobody wants to lose their smartphones. So make sure this option is enabled, all right? 
And real quick, just to show you guys, I am on findmymobile.samsung.com. And as you can see, I have a full control panel that I can use to manipulate my phone from a distance if I have lost it. Now the map will show the exact location, but I have all these other options on my control panel uh, to actually activate and use. All these options are fantastic. So I can ring the phone, I can lock the phone, I can track the location, I can erase all the data on the phone and even do a backup before I do an erase. So that's fantastic. Now the other couple things I wanna talk about has to do with optimizing your smartphone so it runs at maximum performance at all times. So what you wanna do is you wanna scroll down and go into device care, tap on it. And then in device care, uh, as you can see in the middle here, uh, you have the optimized button. I, I just performed an optimization on my phone by tapping the button here. So right now it's at excellent condition. Now this is something you can do manually or you can actually do this automatically. So what you wanna do is you wanna tap on the buttons over here and then go into auto optimization. You tap on that and basically you just enable this and make sure that you pick a time when you're asleep so this task runs automatically in the background while you're asleep. So when you wake up, your phone is fully optimized and ready to go for the day. And of course, that's the first thing you should do. The next thing you should do is again, tap on this button and go into the auto restart. So it is essential to restart Android smartphones at least once a week, again, for optimum performance. Now this option here automates that process. So you enable this and you can actually pick seven days of the week. So you can restart your phone every single day at least once. I recommend picking up two days, uh, such as Monday and Thursday. Okay, so Monday and Thursday are active. And then just pick a time again when you're asleep or when you think it's comfortable for you to have your phone restart. You do not wanna be in the middle of a phone conversation when this happens. So I picked 3 a.m. and I click done. So every Monday and Thursday at 3 a.m., the phone is going to auto restart again, guaranteeing optimum performance, all right? So make sure you enable those two options. Now one more quick thing I wanna show you guys is when you tap on the recents button at the bottom here, you see uh, four apps that you probably use all the time. So these are recently used apps or most used apps that show at the bottom for your convenience. So every time you tap this, boom, uh, these apps, and I know that I use them all the time, so they're showing up right here. Uh, you can disable this if you don't wanna see them, all right? Because you got your apps right here, so when you tap this, maybe you do not wanna see the apps or accidentally tap on them. So go to the settings right here, and then go into uh, suggested apps, just disable that. Now when I go back out, those apps are disappeared, and even the cards are now centered on the screen. So look at that, boom, all right? Just one setting to get rid of if you don't need it. Another very important setting has to do with your password. So if I go to any website over here, let's just say Hulu, and I go to login, and I type in my password. Every time I type in my password, you can see the letters show up in that password box right there. So if I type in F, you'll see that F. If I type in G, you'll see that G, okay? So if somebody's looking at the password field, they can see exactly what you're typing and might even memorize the password that you have. It's a little bit harder to look at the keyboard because your fingers are on it, but that box here is fully exposed. So when you type in, as you can see, you're seeing all the little letters here uh, somebody might get a clue as to what your password might be. So you can disable that option. Just go to the settings right here. Uh, scroll down to biometrics and security. Go all the way down. Tap on other security settings. And make sure make passwords visible is disabled. All right. Now when I go back out there to that website, let me just erase this password and type. It's not going to give any previews. It's, not also, it's also not giving the previews on the, on the keyboard. Normally when you press the keyboard, it shows the bigger letter on the top, but now you're much more safer. All right, so that's security option that needs to be enabled. The next thing you wanna talk about has to do with battery management. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the battery, all right? And then when you're in the battery, tap on those buttons again and go into the settings and make sure adaptive battery is in fact enabled. So this basically limits the battery usage for apps that you do not use often. Many times those apps run in the background and they just waste battery. With this one, you're saving even a little bit more battery life so your phone runs for longer with a single charge. And of course, this is very important here. This happens all the time. Make sure this one is enabled. So any unused apps uh, that are just sitting in the background, it is going to put them to sleep again so they don't eat your battery life, all right? If you tap on this one here, 
you get some more details about what it exactly does and you can also tweak the sleep delay so should the app go to sleep after one day off just not being used and stuff like that all right so just keep i'm going to keep it on one day and then and one more thing while you're here enable or disable based on your needs so this one is the settings power optimization optimize settings if we tap on this one it's going to go to the details and if you enable this basically what's going to happen is these settings that you enable right here these three settings are going to be automatically applied at midnight uh, when most people are not using their smartphones because they do have to go to work the next day. So this one here is gonna be, uh, the brightness will be limited to 49%, no more. And of course the screen timeout is gonna be limited to 30 seconds. And again, if you don't use your screen uh, for 30 seconds, it just shuts off and that's the quickest you can do. And that is gonna save you a lot of battery life. And of course the media volume is gonna be limited to 46%. So these are little things, but if you add them up together, they'll maybe save you two to 3% of extra battery life, just in case you need it, all right? Uh, some people don't need it, some people don't care. Again, it's an option, you can enable or disable. I don't care about this option, I'm gonna just disable it, but it is there if you want to use it. Now let's move on to other areas of your phone. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.